Welcome back to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast. My name is Eric, and in this episode, we're going to expand the previous episode, which was episode seven. This is episode eight, where we were comparing selling at the money put credit spreads on SPY. We were trying to take advantage of the three days, uh, three expiration days per week. And we were selling those with seven days to expiration, comparing uh, selling them versus Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, real quick before we get started though, everything in this episode and on this podcast is for informational purposes only, should definitely not be considered financial advice, and I am not a financial advisor of any kind. So in the last episode, when we were comparing that three-year look back, we had determined that Wednesday had the best performance of the three days. If you were just blindly selling that credit spread at the end of the day and, and basically holding for seven days and letting it go, uh, Wednesday had the best performance. We did the test on SPY, although we also mentioned um, you'd be better off doing this on an index to avoid any kind of assignment risk with um, having that short option in the money were, were it to go in the money. So to recap that trade again, real quick, we're, we were looking at selling a one strike SPY bull put spread with seven days to expiration where the short strike was just out of the money. And I set the back test software to put that short strike right around Delta 48 or that Delta 48 level. So that's how that test was run. So this week I wanna expand the study a little bit, but I gotta admit something real quick. I screwed up in the last episode, I mixed up my uh, results when I was talking about Monday and Friday. So Wednesday was definitely the best day. All the data was accurate from the software. I was just speaking incorrectly when I, when I talked about Monday versus Friday. So I'm very sorry about that. I wanted to set that record straight today in this episode. Um, so if we just recap that, Wednesday was the best and Friday was actually the worst performer with Monday being the second best performer. So if you do go back and listen to that, uh, you can listen to those numbers, but just keep in mind the, the day, those days were mixed up. Uh, we're going to focus a little bit more on Wednesday here. And I want to talk about two main things today. So first, since Wednesday was the best day to just blindly sell and at the money one strike put credit spread on SPY the past three years. I wanted to share the results real quick on trading SPX. And then secondly, we're gonna look at adding a moving average filter to, that, to the three days to see if that improved the results versus just selling blindly. And the general idea there is if the market was trading above a certain moving average, and I think we're gonna we're gonna look at the eight EMA as kind of a short-term bullish indicator. If the market was trading above the eight EMA, uh, and you only took the trades those trades w w with that market condition of the market trading above the eight EMA, does that improve the results, or is it you know does it matter, right? So that's something we're gonna look at too. So I mentioned this last time. Uh, SPX um, I think is a better uh, vehicle for trading short-term spreads, especially like in weekly options and things, because you have that risk of assignment with other stocks, mainly SPY we're talking about. Um, SPX is a European style traded options. And, and the main point of that is that there is no early assignment and it is cash settled. So you don't have to worry about, you know, uh, getting assigned if you had a short option that was in the money as you come up to that weekly option. So as you go farther out in time, 60 days, 45 days, and you're gonna close before, you know, a week or two before expiration, things like SBY and stocks are, are totally fine. So um, just recommendation, just kind of how I approach that. Um, another option uh, that I'm looking into is XSP. So there's SPX was the index, but there's also XSP, which is basically the same price as SPY, uh, but it is a, a mini index. The liquidity isn't quite there um, as, as SPY. Obviously, it's the most SPY is the most liquid, but XSP is something that you may want to take a look at if you want to trade short-term options on on the S&P 500, but you don't you don't want to go up to the S, SPX, the full size. Um, XSP might be a consideration. I'm going to be kind of examining that myself too. So, all right, I got a little bit sidetracked. So in episode seven, we mentioned that the win rate for the SPY trade on Wednesday was 72% and it made just over 1K or $1,000. Uh, and you're basically trading with $100 at a time. So if we compare that to SPX, um, I did the same study on SPX, again, one strike width, but for SPX, that's a five point wide spread. It trades in increments of five points. And you actually ended up with a slightly lower win rate 
with SPX versus SPY. So taking basically the same trade, SPY had a 72% win rate and SPX had a 68% win rate. But let me tell you, this is a little bit misleading as win rates often are. We always hear of, you know, any, you know, I get 80% win rate or 90% win rate. That doesn't necessarily indicate anything about um, profitability. And that's true just comparing these two tickers that are relatively the same and taking the, rel you know, kind of the same trade. Uh, so for the five point wide SPX spread, you're going to need $500 in capital to trade that spread because that's basically the width of the spread. So you need that much in margin or buying power to uh, take that trade. So the five point wide spread, you need $500. And if we compare the capital, uh, we would need to trade a single spread like this between SPY and SPX, you basically need five times the amount of capital to trade a one strike spread. Um, if you trade it in the same manner where it's one whole SPY point is 10 points, you would actually need $1,000 to trade that, but we're gonna do half strikes. And the reason why the SPY is basically a 10th of the SPX. So with the 68% win rate with SPX, and the 72% win rate with SPY, you actually made about the same amount of money when you're talking about how much capital you're having to use. So this kind of gets into the realm of capital efficiency. So for SPY, you made just over $1,000 trading $100 at a time during the three-year period. And for SPX, you made just over $5,000 uh, using $500 at a time. So again, very similar amounts of money capital efficiency wise, uh, but the win rate was um, a little bit different. So I thought that was interesting with that. So just like last time, I'm gonna post the performance comparisons of all the stuff I'm talking about here today. Sometimes it makes a little bit better um, sense to kind of see these results and the, and the reports and things. So I'm gonna put that over on my Patreon page. Um, it's gonna be available for anyone who's supporting the podcast and I'll put the link in the description or the show notes. Again, the show notes can be found at stockmarketoptionstrading.com and this is episode eight. Okay, so so far we, we've been basically talking about blindly selling and at the money bull put spread with seven days to expiration the past three years. So now I wanted to add in a moving average filter that you know would hopefully we would think or at least you know theoretically would possibly improve the results. And again, the idea here is to just, you know, if you if you took this trade, if the market was trading above the ADMA, would it improve the results by keeping you out of losing trades? So if the market's in a downtrend, um, would this moving ad average filter keep you from trading that until the market was back in a, you know, I'm air quoting here, an uptrend? So the first thing that you know, we should expect whenever you add any additional filter or indicator or something to any kind of trading strategy, most likely it's going to reduce the number of trades. It's a filter. It's going to filter out trades that, you know, uh, could be not desirable um, to make your trading a little bit more accurate. So when we add a moving average filter, um, basically expecting to have a reduced number of trades over the three-year period. And basically it did. All three days had a reduced number of trades, obviously because you know part of the time the market would be trading below the ADMA and then we just wouldn't trade the strategy. Um, and let's talk about each day here. So for Monday, it actually decreased the win rate. So, and, and let me be clear, when the market was trading above the ADMA, we were only taking this trade. If it was trading below the ADMA, we were not taking the trade. And the win rate actually decreased from 73% to 70%. So not a huge decrease, but it actually reduced the profit. It went from $843 with no moving average filter to making $787 with the filter. So, um, so for Monday, the 8 EMA filter did not help the trade. Uh, now, Wednesday was interesting. Now, remember, Wednesday was the day that performed the best. It actually increased the win rate from 72 to 74%, but the actual profit dropped a little bit. So without the ADMA filter, the profit was at just over a grand, like we mentioned. With the filter, it was closer to $800, just under $800. So it was still the best day, uh, but it actually, the, the profits were reduced. So the, in this case, the ADMA filter did not help Wednesday either. 
Um, and when we talk about Friday, it actually did improve Friday from 68% to 72% win rate. And we went from $533 to $721. So it was, it was kind of interesting to see that depending on the day and this, you know, we're getting into some randomness here. Um, it, it either increased it or it decreased it. So there, it wasn't clear that the eight EMA filter would actually be an improvement for this weekly strategy. I did try some other filters like five EMA, three EMA, and it, it was all relatively the, this in the same boat. You reduce the number of trades that were taken and there were mixed results. There wasn't a clear takeaway that just trading this when the market's above a, move, a short term moving average, that it actually improved anything. So if you were to ask me which day of the week was the best to trade this bull put spread the past three years, and should you trade it with or without that eight, eight EMA filter, um, I'm going to have to stick with the original one from last week, which is Wednesday with no moving average. It straight up made the most money by 20% and adding that filter actually reduced it. You had a, you know, a slightly lower win rate, but ultimately we're just kind of not worried about that. We're worried about making money over time. So trading it on Wednesday uh, with SPX, you know, if you wanted to translate it to that, and I'm going to look at XSP as well. Uh, it made the most money over the past three years. So before I go real quick, could you do me a favor and leave a review on Apple podcast and maybe share this on your favorite social network? I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the links if you want to see the studies from last week and this week. This is episode eight. You can check that out over on the podcast website. So that's all I got for this episode. Thanks for subscribing and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening to the Stock Market Options Trading Podcast. To join our community of options traders, head on over to patreon.com forward slash vertical spread options trading for details. But before you go, you should know that everything discussed on this podcast and in this episode is for informational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice of any kind. 